Hi, I'm Emma from Emma Corns and this is video blog number three. I've also been trying to organise my open studio which is on the 6th of December. Got loads to sort out for that, um, as well as buying mince pies and some bubbles. I need to obviously tidy up my studio and get it ready for people coming around to have a go at leatherwork and see what our plans are for next year, but it's all quite exciting. And the other reason I've been quite busy is we've been setting up our win a bag competition online. Uh, I don't know if any of you have entered it yet. If you go onto the website, there's a box in the top right hand corner and that takes you through. At the moment, I think your chances are, are about are pretty good. I've had about 200 entries and they're slowly creeping up. It's worth an entry. And we know you've all got such different tastes and like different bags. And we were just going to give away specifically a Kirsty and Lewis, I think we thought we'd give away. But actually thought, why not open it up and let the winner decide? So that's what we've done. And the other reason I've been quite busy is back in June, we won the Country Homes and Interiors magazine, My Country Business Awards. And part of the prize for that was a business mentoring from Helen Barbon, the vice chairman of Barber. And I think they were probably meant to be on the phone, but a few weeks ago I had an email um, saying, do you want to come up to North Shields and, and spend the day with Helen uh, and the team? And uh, of course we said yes. So yesterday, uh, Pete and I got up very early and got on the train to South Shields. And then they whisked us off to their HQ where we went into their barber house, the headquarters. And from there, we then went to see the factory where they make all of their classic wax jackets. And it was amazing. You walk in the door and the noise was incredible. There were loads of sewing machines running. First of all, we went to see the area where they cut out all the jackets. And I guess it's not a million miles away from the way we cut it out, but I don't have chainmail uh, gloves and a, a big electronic cutting thing. I just have a small table, but the principles were the same. They were lying out loads and loads of layers of material and cutting it all out in one go. And then it went onto the, the lines of sewing machines and you could see each bit each machinist was doing it. And then it was being pushed down on a sort of trolley system all the way around the factory till it gets to the amazing people at the end who fit the studs very quickly. And then it goes for quality control. And then we went through a door into a sort of zen quiet place and that was their customer service area. And at any point you can send back one of their jackets and have them altered, reproofed and repaired. And they do about 130 a day or something, it's a lot. And there are only a few machinists in there, but they're all incredibly skilled. They can take a jacket that's 20, 30 years old. They've had some far back as the early 1900s, I think. Um, and they can make it usable again if it's completely destroyed. There were some that were so worn out that they almost didn't look like the original jacket anymore, but it was an amazing service. After we'd had the factory tour, I went round to the barber shop where they very kindly gave me a jacket, of course. So I picked one that was made in the factory over the road. And then I went and had lunch with Helen, which was amazing because she obviously involved with Barber, but she's also run lots of other businesses from small online businesses to dating agencies and all sorts of uh, different things. So it was really nice to be able to pick her brains about her experience and how that might be able to help us. And if you want to find a bit out a bit more about our day with Barber, uh, take a look on my blog. Mm -hmm.